Okay, so here we are in front of a little scene that I picked up in North Wales. And I just want to see if it'll work. I often do these quite small little things um, when I'm sort of trying out a subject, all right? It's got a background hill, which I'm going to place as a wet in wet. And the idea is that the top of the farm is shining with light, all right? So let's go in for the backdrop using some blues, some reds, but a gray first up in the corner here. And it's lovely and loose and wet using these mammary blue colors. They really are lovely colors, mammary, mammary blue paints coming in to the little stub that is the backdrop hill dissolving into the frost the frost the mist and I can place that on there bring it down because what I did particularly like was this backdrop as it came down had some quite nice colors and it was darker than the roof so I'm going to come in now with some of the sort of mammary blue type greens that I've got here, cobalt greens, etc. They're nice colours and they're soft, see, and very nice and distant. That's, that's the cobalt one, I think. Cobalt dark, I think, and cobalt sort of medium. And I'm just introducing that through. Then it gets warmer and sort of browner as it comes in to the foreground. So using fairly stiff paint, I can now drift in some of the colors. Raw sienna, a bit of burnt sienna. And I can bring that through. I want to distribute now some darker green so I can dig out some of the green with the burnt sienna perhaps. I bet this will be too severe. Well, and that's not bad. I just want to place some of this through. It's all going to be played down, as you'll see um, at the end. Right, now I can come on now to the foreground. Not the foreground, sorry, the midground. That needs to stop there. So I'll take that bead off. Okay. I can add water again now, I suppose, can I? Or should I keep it as a bead? I'll keep it as a bead. I mean, we've got to make these decisions. So I'll keep that as a bead. Bring it down through here. I'm going to change to a smaller brush because I'm just going to place the lighter elements of the roof, which was a little bit violet-y. I don't want this to be too dark. I can let that water come into it, the bead there. Place that. I can come through the rather greyish walls that were there because they are going to be a second wash as well. So you've got to sort of appreciate these things before you start off. You've got to have a plan of action. Let me get you in on that. You've got to have a plan of action as to where you're going and how you're going to execute the watercolour. All right, this is quite nice to wrap around some sheep because part of the process of this was that there were these sheep up against the building and I want to introduce a bit of warmth and I want to just, you know, get these placed. There's that. I can bring this wash down through this wall too. This is, is a lake, this little bit of white. I might leave it, I might not. Let's get some bit more colour in within that. I don't want to lose some of these sheep if I can help it. I'm trying to keep this wet, which is aided by just bringing this bead down. There's the other wall. I'm going to put a little bit of green into that. Just anything to change the colour, swing the colour around. 
that comes down. I'm going to dissolve the base of the wall anyway soon. So there's that. All right. Come back up now. I want a nice light, bright, sort of lemon yellowy foreground. So back to a larger brush. Let's take this bead off once again. Okay. And now I'm going to mix a nice petal of a sort of cadmium -y yellow with a bit of the cobalt green and I can come in here establishing a nice bead leave that for a sheep leave that for a sheep and of course that get into that there before it dries there's not much of a bead so cut in there and let's get some more this wants to go on I think fairly quickly which is a nuisance because um, I want to try and drop some other colors back into it and I can't get it on as quick as I'd like because I haven't masked out anything so I've got to cut around things but I should be able to if I keep working fast enough a little bit too strong in the green so bring it back over through all right a bit more water in that and through and under there right i can get this in now i think and that should be the first the first wash completed i'm not working with such a big bead because i want this to be quite strong but what i'm doing consequently is working rapidly i'm going to place a little bit of burnt sienna and some greens to echo these. All right. Just mainly in the foreground. I can start, I suppose, on the shadows of the sheep. If I can bring them just through and run them across. There. And that see that's the first wash i let that dry now and i've got to try and put maybe just one or two more second washes on it i have forgotten but i wanted there's a lovely green door in the middle of the barn so i'm going to try now with quite stiff paint to place that door in there I'm probably going to get away with that because I have to darken those walls. It's my intention to place a second wash on the wall. Um, I just let that dry. Okay, so this is now dry. And I'm going to put a second wash, a nice glazy wash over the top to bring the tone of this down. And I'm starting with like a Berlin blue, it's called in the Mimari colors. I just want to get a nice sort of bead placed up here. It's a Berlin blue with a bit of sky blue, a little bit of red. As I come down to the hill, I think I can change to more of this sort of burnt sienna type of color in to strengthen that. I don't mind if more of the first wash starts to show through, I think I want that darker than that. This hill really has got to come down in tone because my intention is to make the roofs, etc., shine. And put it up through there again. My intention is to make the roofs shine on the farm. So if I travel, keep replenishing the brush and what I'll do I just echo the colors that's underneath okay changing this as I travel as well trying to keep it nice and reasonably wet let's go in to these sort of deeper greens and try and create a sort of greeny sort of blaze for over here as well 
Put some more water in the process. Got to keep it wet. Come in down. And add more blue to this mix. And let's see what it does. That's very blue. Whoops. Right. Warm it a bit. Why don't you keep it liquid and wet? The colours aren't actually too um aren't actually too important. It's the tone that's more. And this will come down. I can put some of this deeper, lovely blue through there. Because I'm painting so quickly, it's all very wet, you see? And I bring this down. And this is what I'm going to use probably now. Put a bit of green with it to get on top of the buildings. So as I come down, I can replenish this bead. And let's take this now across the there through here let's get you in a little bit then nice thing about having a brush which will point is when you get to these bits of course it's easier don't concentrate on one area for too long let's come through quickly onto the top of the wall something nice and strong now to pull this roof out there we go it goes in there i can take that bead off after let's get on with this and then i'm going to put a little bit of water as i travel towards the end Maybe there now. I'm going to make some negatives in this. I think I can actually bring that through. That's going to be darker. But here, I'll concentrate on trying to get some little negative fence posts, etc. It just creates that sort of bric-a-brac-y feeling. Nothing too drastic. Keep it at the back. I may try now and draw into this back cloth with some stiffer, stronger marks while it's still wet. Take the bead off here. Doubtless more will accumulate. So I just want to indicate some sort of formations. I'm going to use a Berlin blue and a deep, um, a deep burnt sienery type brown. And let's have a look. What should I do? Well, I want to get the light to shine on here. I'm going to place something up. Start through there, see? I can restate that. Start through there. Swing up through. And only little bits. We don't need to overdo this. It's just to give the impression of distance. And as this brush loses some of the colour, I can just touch things up further into the distance. You see? Don't need too much at all. So I've got to stop soon, haven't I? There. Bit of spatter. There and there. And that's the backdrop now. Pulled down, darker. All right. Don't forget we said the purpose of this was to try to get these roofs to shine a bit. So now I'm going to make a strong, a strong wash to take most of the walls into shade, all right? I can use a bit of this that I've already got. And I can violetize it a bit to gray it. Let's have a look. 
Little tops of stones in here. Little tops of stones in here to really just give the impression of that. And behind this wall, there is a wall in shadow. That's a little bit too violet. I want to gray it somehow. So I'm going into some more blues and sort of reds just to gray the thing off. And let's come through there, down. And I can bring this. Quite absorbent paper, this Canson Heritage I've got. I can just put some bric a brac bits in there. There's the shadow. Bring this bead under here for a lovely shadow. All right. And then I can step back into the grade off wash. And I've got to remember now, haven't I, that I want to get this opening there. Slightly changing the wash here and there, as we should. There. Cut around that. Go into the warmer blue red side of a wash. Here we come. Keep giving myself some negatives. Slide out under there. And now I can come down and do a good shadow here. Again, I can keep, I can do another sheep if I want, I suppose, there. All right, and cut that across there. There. I'm going to put another window in there. Put the end of that wall on. Bring some of these posts, which you can't see. Bring some of these little posts down and in. the field and I can place some shadows off them. Right, so there is the attempt just to get that wall and building in. It's quite simple isn't it? And all I need to do now is a little bit in the foreground. So this is constant moving on. I'm going to get some rich dark all right. I think the, the dark I'm using from the Mimari is called Dragon's Blood. Dragon's Blood, Berlin Blue. All right. Quite stiff. So it'll give this lovely dark, which I can now drop into there. What I do want to do, before it dries, is I just want to Put that green into shadow ever so slightly so I can just place that gently up against the other wash have some liquid I don't want too much water on the brush because it's going to blow into that wash you see so I'm just very deftly we hope pulling that down a degree there we are that'll do this a little case now of just indicating with some dark Darker wash indicating the sheep. One there. We've got one here. And this is just stuff that's around the palette. Just doing the shadow side of them. There. Long as these front ones look like sheep, I'll stand a chance of winning. Get some more good dark on the brush and I can just put the sort of heads just an indication of the heads there, there and the feet not too much on these distant ones of course the main thing I want is to um, is to drag a shadow off, isn't it? To detach these to the ground and make out this late 
late sort of evening light. That's coming across. Let's try the front sheep. A little bit of dark, maybe a little bit of damp water on these. Simple little thing, there's nothing too busy, nothing too detailed. Just indicating the shapes. Just to see if this sort of tonal handling of it with a darker backdrop, etc., just to see if it'll work, you know. Got to get these two to actually read like sheep. Let's take some of that off there. And let's get this nice long shadow drag there. I need now to maybe do a bit of spattering on the front. Any dark will do. Bits, isn't it, to just to indicate this uh, eveningness of the scene, the longer shadows. And you know, I'm just going to indicate now ever so slightly a few of the greyish blocks, not many, don't need to, and not too dark either. And um, there it is. There's the sort of uh, finished little picture. We take a stare at it and we ask, how could we make it better and stronger? Well, I think I'm going to just strengthen the darks in the sheep again, just to get the sheep really to come forward, you know? And a few of these could be darker. We really need to come forward. Uh, so that immediately just bounces the foreground forward. Some little bits in there. I'm going to just creep a little extra dark. If it's still damp, it'll do it. Yes, under there. See? These might take a bit more dark. Okay. He's fiddling now. So for the guys of this little exercise in North Wales, we can call that done. And it is one that I may well tackle as a larger, bigger, as a larger, bigger subject. So you can have a little go with that if you um, if you so wish. Thanks for joining me.